What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a Cerebral Ball commentary. You're listening to Mike. And I'm Adam. We're going to be playing uh, the original Resident Evil, or in fact, the uh, the Resident Evil remake on the GameCube, which, um, in case you didn't know, it's being re-released on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 very soon. Yeah, 2002 on the GameCube. What a classic. 12 years old already, this. Shocking, actually, that. But we're actually playing this on the Dolphin emulator, which is an amazing emulator, but I do apologize in advance for any bugs or glitches that may arise. But let's get straight into it. Completely random intro. I've never really understood that intro, even when I had it on the GameCube. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand why they put that in there, but why not? Is it any different compared to the, the weird eye that appeared and then blood yeah. splattered on the screen from the actual original? The eye always reminds me of the tyrant, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the tyrants are sort of exactly. synonymous with eyes. That's right. So for this, we'll be playing as Jill, but as you can see, you've got Chris there, Chris Redfield. There he is in his original Stars outfit. Much less pumped than he, than he is in Resident Evil 5. He hadn't taken the steroids by that point. No, this is true. So for this, we're playing as Jill. There she is. But I can understand why Chris got pumped. Because the point is in the transitional game is Code Veronica, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Because after Albert Wesker injects himself, well, he doesn't inject himself, he wakes up from his uh, yeah. impaling in this game. Mm. He, uh, he becomes super powerful, and that's when Chris loses in a physical fight to him. Mm. So he becomes ultra pumped in five to be able to match Wesker in a and Chris has no choice, does he, but to get physically muscular. And he's already like, he's twice the size of Wesker, but that's the only way he can actually match yeah. the gen genetic power. In, 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 in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Yeah. This, this uh, FMV I've always enjoyed in the remake, uh, the original was actually a live, live action action one, wasn't it? We're apparently it's the only Resident Evil uh, game to ever feature a live action cutscene. The Bravo team was sent in. Yeah. Liked it. Yeah, I, I... But we lost contact. It's weird. I think this is a better cutscene. Yeah. I think this is a better cutscene. But I do Bravo miss the live action. There's, there's certain moments, like the newspaper bit. It's got some great sound effects and some great general sort of kind of horror moments but Safe I think this is probably a better cut it does it's a lot easier to edit something that's completely CGI right and rather than going through the live action stuff but it had that kind of B movie quality as well yeah, they did yeah Continued our search for the I think that's universe. what they were going for in a sort of yeah. weird way well listen to the dialogue <laughs> you were nearly a chill sandwich <laughs> a lost in translation dialogue it's kind of the equivalent of don't come don't come that is one which makes no why sense why has no one ever figured out that don't, don't come, come any closer is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. But so many games where people say don't come because they think it's... Right. We say that over here. No one says don't come. No one says don't come. No one ever wants to say don't come. Well, why are the English voice actors doing that? They're not going, well, actually, that doesn't really work. Yeah, why doesn't someone go, do you know what, I've been in England a while now. Yeah. I don't think that they say don't come. I think they say don't come any closer. I think this scene's still pretty effective. All these years on. No, it works really well. Yeah. It's still pretty gruesome. I wouldn't like to die by Doberman. Die by Doberman. Death by Doberman. <laughs> Zombie Doberman. It's not a good way to go. Ketchup on the screen there. Squeeze the ketchup out of his burger. Who's firing the gun? He's still just like it's firing off. You can hear a yeah. trigger without bullets there. Yeah. Just did a bit of a Mac from Predator. Yeah. Mm. He's enjoying himself. Look at him smiling. <laughs> Having a wonderful time. Well pleased with himself. He's loving it. Yeah. Just leave him his helmet. Oh. Bam. Come on! Look at Chris and Jill there, the original duo. Brad in the helicopter who leaves and he meets a grisly end and Resident Evil 3 by Nemesis. Doesn't yeah, he? Well, it's, I think he deserves it, doesn't he, for buggering off? Bales, doesn't he? Yeah. Brad! This sound effect is just unnecessary of Chris, isn't it? Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, so, so what would that have been like in fast motion, <laughs> in normal speed? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it's great, though. And I, do what I do like about this intro is I think you just clearly see the characters more like Wesker and mm. Barry and Chris and Jill and Joseph. It fits much more into the lore, doesn't it, when you actually get to see the characters and how they talk and everything. Because it fits much better when you actually switch to CGI. Because let's face it, the original uh, live action ones look nothing like the characters. Well, even Wesker had... What is this? Blonde hair in the, uh, yeah. in, the in the intro, but he had brown hair yeah. in the pixels. <laughs> Look how good it looks still. This was incredible. I remember the first time hey, I saw this. Where's Chris? Can you believe graphics. it? Jill, no. It's really kind of showcase this what the is, actual game is. This is our first hint that Wesker's plan. He's up to oh, something here. Fine. What was that? For me, though, anybody who wears shades no. inside is a bit, you know, shady. Jill. 
to go and investigate. Simplicit, isn't it? I'm going with her. Chris and I. I was going to say, well, we mentioned earlier on, didn't we, this, that right. in the original, we didn't really cotton on to this, but I like the way that he Stay immediately sharp. says, Jill, go and investigate. And he doesn't expect Barry to say, I'm going with her. That's right. Because he wants to separate them both because he's trying to manipulate Barry into helping him later on. That's right. It's all part of his storyline, all part of his plan, isn't it? And also, going around solo is actually what makes this game so scary compared to Resident Evil 5 when you've got your buddy who's going along with you. In this, you're on your own. Albeit a little bit of help from Barry here and there, but humans have evolved as a social group, haven't we? So suddenly being thrown into somewhere on our own, we, we become hyper-aware, slightly paranoid, and all that sort of shit. So that's why it's so scary. I think and nobody else to take cues off of, which, you know, freaks people out. That's why the older Resident Evil's are more scary. I don't think Barry's that much help anyway, although he just, he just kind of wield a massive gun. See if you can Barry's no help. <laughs> well, actually, if you, don't do the, um, <clears throat> if you don't do the J-Vault against the, uh, the plant in the guardhouse, then he helps, but if not, he's kind of a safety net for the Jill character, isn't he? He is, yeah. Which is why it was always a little bit scarier playing as Chris. Although I prefer playing as Jill, she's got a nicer ass. Yeah, and she's got a better story. Yeah. Jill's got to be one of the hottest characters in Resident Evil. Yeah, she is the woman, isn't she? Unless you count Rebecca. Claire. Claire as well, well, yeah. Excella. Excella. Alexia. Sheva. This such an unforgettable scene. Everyone remembers the first time they saw this. This is iconic. That's going to go down as arguably the greatest yeah. game cutscene of all time. Yeah. I mean, it's short, but it's just so effective. But it's so effective. Everyone yeah. knows the moment the zombie turns around in Resident Evil. That's it. It throws you into the action and off you go. What is it? Look out! Well, yeah, but we take issue with this bit, don't we? Yeah, because he fires, what, three magnum rounds into this guy? And he runs off afterwards? Yeah, not only does he survive three magnum rounds to the chest when it'll blow his head off, but he manages to get up, run off and close the door afterwards. Yeah, so he goes out a door as well, which is physically impossible for the zombies throughout yeah. the rest of the game. Yeah, slight plot hole, but I do love that shot. It's very Alone in the Dark. It is. Very original Alone you just need that little, little hand. The little hand on it. Yeah. They should have done it. Yeah. It would have been a bit eerie, so he's watching them. Here we go. I don't know, because zombies can't really, aren't really conscious enough to put their hand on something and just stare pensively. <laughs> it's true. Unless it was like Alfred or something. From Carl Alfred. Veronica. He was up there, laughing away to himself. One hand on his junk. Wesker! He's a great character, isn't he? He is. He is, probably, arguably, he's what I got, he's, oh, I don't know. I reckon he'd be quite high up in my list of Resident Evil villains. Salazar? Behind Wesker, Wesker's number one. Wesker's obviously number one, yeah. But he, he must be, he's got to take number two. Guy's a genius. Uh, the laugh. Welcome, Claire. It's just... <laughs> yeah, he, he's, pretty, he's a weird fucking tranny. Fair. Code Veronica. I'm a big fan of the Psycho movie. No. Code Veronica ripped straight from those pages, didn't it? Uh, that's right, it did. Same here. And to great effects. I know you've you've spoken extensively about this before. In fact, you devoted a whole uh, article to it. So. I'll investigate the dining room again. I love the, um, I'll try the, door on the other side. contrast that's in this game from light to dark Gigantic. and not being able to see around the corners. I love the fixed camera angles. The, the, yeah, it's a bit old hat now. But the static cameras are really effective because you can hear the noise, but you can't go around the corner. Yeah, it restricted your vision, didn't it? That's right. And the imagination is always going to be worse yeah. than what you can actually see. Listen. Evolutionary thing. There's a lot of context in that with human evolution is where we, if we can't see something, we're immediately scared of it. Well, so if we can't see around the corner, but we can hear something, it's like, what the fuck is that? I don't want to go around there. That's what... But it forces you to. That's what Liam Neeson says in Batman Begins, men fear most what they cannot see. Exactly. Exactly, it works well. And they also play on other people's, you know, the number one and two animal phobias, which are snakes and spiders. They put giant versions in this game. Classic. Great psychology. Yeah, and I thought that was a nice touch in Zero, actually. A lot of people didn't like the kind of primal enemies that are in Zero, which are like monkeys and dogs and you know Scorpion. animals but I quite like the way that it went from like bacteria which is the virus to leeches which is testing to animals which is the next phase of testing mm. to then human outbreaks which is what this game is progression and that's right uh, it gets you on all levels it's clever yeah exactly I really liked it this game's great this is like this is arguably my favourite game of all time I'm so pleased it's been released for HD remaster because finally after the niche console that was the GameCube people are going to realise how awesome this was
It was something of a niche console. I don't think it meant to be. Obviously, it didn't mean to be. It obviously, meant to send, sell loads. But I think the way they dressed the console in, in a childish sort of veneer. Yeah, games like Pikmin and mm. Baku Baku and that sort of game. And then this came out. And it just yeah. didn't really fit in with the, no. the the aesthetic of the GameCube. But inside, it was such a hardcore machine. And I think um, Sinji said that he didn't want Resident Evil 4 to go over to the PlayStation 2 because it would look worse. But it went over anyway. So I think that's one of the reasons he left the company. But it's all worked out because he's basically working on the spiritual successor of this, which is the Evil Within. It looks good. Something I've noticed, I don't know if anyone's realised yet, on the Evil Within, when the police car pulls up with the main characters in it and they open the door, their badge is freakishly similar to the Stars badge. as a little homage to I haven't noticed that, Resident but, yeah. Evil. Yeah. What a surprise. It's got the three gold stars and the round emblem on it. It'd be IP theft if he's not careful. Do you know what I think I've got to say about this remake is that they kept the amazing soundtrack. It's a different soundtrack, but... It's just incredible. It's along the same lines, though, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. Probably one of my favourites of all time, actually. And this is this is probably my favourite example of a remake in any form of art medium. Yeah, this game defines remake. This is the this isn't just an upscaling or a retexture. This is it. This is what a remake should be. Yeah. And I've heard a lot of let's plays talk about this or reviews. Yeah. It really is. And like this because. Back in the day of the 32-bit generation, they were limited. Their imagination was limited by the technology that they had, which is what we're all in now. But this is pretty much what the developers were imagining when they were, came up with the concept of Resident Evil. That's right. So visually, and from an atmosphere point of view, this is probably what they were thinking of, but the pixels weren't really up to scratch of trying to achieve like, the lighting and shadow effects and that sort of stuff. That's right, and as they started to flesh out this new remake version, they went back to all the original concept art and everything and, you know, just filled out all the backstory. Ah, oh, well, that's the other thing that was so good about this. Like, a really good example is when you find on Wesker's body, after he gets impaled by the tyrant, you find a letter from William Birkin, who's obviously the antagonist of Resident Evil 2, talking about, I can't wait to see the look on it, on... Alexia's face yeah. when I've done this because he's a direct rival to Alexia in Code Veronica. That's right. So it's so great that they had no idea after the original Resident Evil that it was going to take off to the extent that it did. So this remake fills in the narrative gaps of mm. characters like William Birkin and Alexia and Alfred. And that's apparent at the end of the end of this actual game is that it's not an open-ended game. They wrap it all up at the end in the storyline. So yeah. they weren't sure how successful this game was going to be, so they just tied up the storyline. But the rest of the game is always like, I keep asking myself if it's all worth fighting for, and it always continues. I think this is a really important point to mention at this point with Jill running up here, that this game, people, they say, is 70% different, different yeah. from the original. That's what Sinjin and claims, yeah. Up until this point, apart from <clears throat> the initial intro and arriving at the mansion everything that you've seen on this walkthrough so far is different from the original game every environment that you've been in apart from the upstairs of the dining room yeah. I like to equate it to the Hobbit film from the Hobbit books I mean they use a lot of Tolkien's notes and everything to flesh out the films and they actually turned it into three films I think they stretched it a bit too far but yeah I mean it's got a lot of, a lot of other things in it from the original uh, concept I kind of wish they'd do the same thing for Resident Evil 2, but I don't think they will. It's probably a bit too late in the game for that. A bit like what they're doing with Halo 2. Hey man, the, if you play this right, there's that glitch in the wall. Yeah, you'll see that in a moment. A glitch. It's a glitch that I discovered. All you just have to do is back into the bookcase and the zombie's powerless. Yeah. I remember this scene in the original. It was a lot more blue, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. You could just hear your character's footsteps click clocking on the marble floor. And I just remember looking at the artwork and thinking it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. It was obviously Capcom coined the phrase survival horror, so it was the first survival horror I ever played. And here's a new touch for the remake, defensive weapons. Which are great in case something, an enemy grabs you, you've kind of got a bit of a get out of jail card. Something they expanded on in Resident Evil Zero. Yeah, that's the thing, I'd imagine a lot more people played the actual original on the PlayStation and the, and the Sega Saturn than they did the remake. So I wonder if this glitch will be in the HD remake, remaster, or they've removed it. And there's that glitch that we spoke about. There it is. Look at him. Now you need to time this right to get out of here, otherwise he's just going to grab you. Ready? Go, 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 go! Just get stuck in the ah, graphics. Yeah. He made it. You time it right, so, you yeah, can run out. Sometimes it's hard to run out of there. I mean, that's, a, that's another key difference, is that you didn't need a key originally to get through that door. Mm -hmm. That was the first port of call in the original game. As was this, with the dogs jumping through the window. Yeah, you just get the crack this time around, don't you? You get the crack and then you have to run through it from the other door backwards. You can run through this corridor as many times as you want as long as you run through it in the same direction. 
And that's the thing with this sort of area. They cut the actual soundtrack out and make it that little bit more ominous with just the sound effects going on. And uh, it's very clever what they do. And sometimes they add a, add, a, add a soundtrack for no reason as well and trick you. It's got such an incredible use of soundtrack mm. that it's what one of the developers said on the original game of taking inspiration from Alone in the Dark and they pushed mm. it further of sometimes when music plays it makes you feel safe sometimes when music plays it's the opposite effect it makes you think why is there music playing but then other times they could use it to catch you out that's right it's such a great it's such a great little touch that they don't use in the survival horror yeah. games these days it's very psychological isn't it brilliant you know they employ that sort of technique in Outlast which I've been playing recently and there's a guy in a wheelchair and that and you think hang on a minute this guy's gonna jump out on me and he doesn't move and then you walk past a load of people who are watching TV and none of those move either and you automatically think are they blind are, are they, they blind? just ignoring me yeah so, so the next time you walk past him in the wheelchair you think he's not gonna grab me and then bam he does yeah. so they catch brilliant. you unaware brilliant use of horror that this is great understanding of what how you're gonna react double bluffing you with a cliche exactly which is also good about because you know he's going to jump at you yeah but it rules you into a false sense of security which is brilliant that's it it's the third time you see him and by that point you're like Meh. I always thought she was um pregnant at that point I Barry's, was, there, Barry's when baby. the original Resident Evil came out there was a massive viral rumour that there was a scene where Jill and Barry had sex in a bath yeah I remember that you remember that going around well, here I, don't, I think it was bollocks if I'm honest no, with you no. but I remember it going around for ages. It's really odd. Probably some weird mod out there somewhere. You could probably yeah, hook down. It's just odd, really. I don't know why they put yeah. it in this game. I don't know who'd want to see Barry's white ass. They can sort of play in this game on autopilot. You could be a Barry and Wesker sandwich. Yeah. I wonder what Wesker's getting at this point. Who knows? But yeah, man, you're flying through this. How, how was the fastest time you ever completed this game? Uh, Three hours, four minutes. Three hours, four minutes. You are four minutes off the achievement on the Xbox One. I know, and I think the world record is... I was about six minutes off the world record, something like that. At the time. Damn, that's, uh, you must have played that game a hell of a lot to get that fast. I just played it on... I, could, I got to a point playing this game where I could just... I'm taking my time on this, killing zombies and stuff, but... I could just I could just run through this game. It was unreal. It was like it was like riding a bike. Are you going to burn any of those those guys on the ground as crimson heads so they turn into? No, I always leave them. I've I've never. I think I've burned. In fact, there's an achievement on the remaster which is burning them. So I'm going to do it then. But yeah, if I'm honest with you, I just didn't because you can actually tell when they turn into a crimson head because their position on the floor changes. They, 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 you'll see how they land and then it'll. Yeah. Once they change the graphics of, uh, of Crimson Head, they're laying in a different position, so you just know to avoid them. Yeah, it adds to the tension as well, so you might as well leave them there. But a lot of the times in the original Resident Evil, I ran past the enemies anyway. Yeah, you got to be careful with hunters. Crimson Heads, because one swipe and they'll take your head off a bit like a hunter on the original mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. That sound, that music. It's strange. <clears throat> they took those out of uh, Resident Evil Zero. No Crimson Heads in Zero's that. underrated. It is underrated, yeah, indeed. I definitely agree that it's probably... Maybe not as good as it could have been, but I love the opening train level. Amazing throwback. Again, it's another inescapable environment, isn't it? The only thing I don't like is the whole David Bowie bloke who with leeches and he sings and... <laughs> what's his name? He's got that strange shirt James on. Marcus. Yeah, him. I like the idea that one of the original founders of Umbrella is wanting revenge, but yeah. the whole, like, singing and the, the leeches come to him a bit like Dr. Doolittle, it's a bit... <laughs> bit odd yeah. you know what I mean yeah, I, don't I get like it. the way that the leeches form him that's quite eerie but I hate the way that he's got a younger version of himself that stands out on a cliff singing opera what's that about I don't even like the way the, le the leeches form him to be honest with you I think that's I don't know but that's quite eerie that yeah, it's physically impossible though isn't it and what do they get like do they all get together and put a lab coat on <laughs> and how does that work I think it's got a great setup but I just imagine that Bravo team's experience was a little bit more I didn't imagine when I was playing this game that Bravo team encountered a guy who could sing opera. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think they would have reported that. It would have been... I love news. the idea of Bravo team. I love the idea that you play as Rebecca and I love the ecliptic express train that you play out. That opening train yeah. bit is classic Resident Evil on a train with the rain outside. It's eerie. It's brilliant. I don't even mind Billy as a character, the, the inmate you find. But... He's a bit cliche though, isn't he? I just think it goes a bit... I don't know... It doesn't have the same... I think what they did in Resident Evil Zero, I think they played it safe. I think they did ex exactly what everyone would have expected, but they didn't do anything different. And I, that didn't offend me. I really enjoyed it. It was classic Resident Evil, and that's exactly what it was, with the fixed camera angles and everything. But I feel they could have pushed the, em the envelope a little bit further. Very quickly, do you remember on the original, there was a glitch on this, where when you test both doors to yeah. get out, sometimes it just didn't work, and you ended up getting crushed. 
It's right. really infuriating because you check that door, you check that door, and it kicks in a cutscene. Yeah. And it does that on the original, but every now and then on the original, it just you didn't work. You keep going back and forward and yeah. checking, and nothing and, will happen. And then it just didn't work. That was the Sega Saturn version, wasn't yeah, it? I don't, it was know, I don't know about the PlayStation version, but. But talking about Zero, there's two things I'd say about Zero. One, it is the king of pre-rendered background Resident Evils. That's when they really mastered oh, yeah. pre-rendered backgrounds. Mm. It was incredible. And two, it has an incredible soundtrack. Mm. All Resident Evil's have got an incredible soundtrack, even the new ones. But that game has an immense soundtrack. It's so foreboding and eerie. It's unreal. The training facility, the cathedral music, they're so good. It's classic. few piano pieces, weird opera, choir singers, nice strings, deep brass instruments, really eerie stuff. Classic old school Resident Evil. It is. And not a lot of people have heard that either, and it's one of the best ones. In fact, all of the Resident Evil's have got great soundtracks. Uh, in fact, one of the underrated Resident Evil soundtracks is actually Resident Evil 6, and a lot of people hate that game. If you actually listen to the soundtrack, maybe pick it out on YouTube without having to watch the actual game. Get that out of your face and listen to the soundtrack. It's awesome. Do you know what does annoy me about Resident Evil Zero? Is that, and I think they kind of touch on it in this, but Wesker, there's that sort of storyline that he sends Alpha Team in, or stars, to get test data for the monsters, doesn't he? Yeah. Combat data. That's stupid. Because surely in the original game and this, the reason he's going in is to blow up the place to cover yeah. their tracks. That's yeah. why he's gone in. And so I hate the way that in Zero, he sat there with Birkin, which is great because it expands on their story. But I hate the way Birkin's like, so what are you going to do now? And he's like, oh, well, I'm going in to get combat data. It's like, why? What, what are you doing that for? Birkin's saying, I'm going to go off and continue work on my G-Virus. Um, in fact, that's a really bad line in Zero because it's really bad exposition where he says, he says something like, um, oh, I've, I've not had time to perfect the T-Virus, but I've not had even more time to perfect the ever-growing G-Virus. And it's like, what, for Resident Evil 2? You've thrown that line in for Resident Evil 2. But like, I hate the way, why has Wesker suddenly gone, no, we need to get testing? Why? I'm not sure where he got that motive from. I don't know where he got that motive from. Mm. Why didn't he say... I'm going in there to cover our tracks because if this ever goes public, you and me are going to be exposed. So I'm going to make sure I blow up this mansion. And that makes more sense. That makes more sense why he's kidnapping the stars members and why he wants to kill them off one by one. And he blows up the mansion because he even says to Joe in this, she says, for the sake of these things, and he, he says, smart girl, but the things you mentioned are nothing. I'm going to destroy all them along with this place. I think you need to get Capcom on the blower. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a bit in that. Yeah, that? Jesus like, Christ, man, he's a uh, vent that fucking I love, anger. I love, do you know what I do love? I love how Wesker, I love Wesker's transition from, he's my favourite video game villain of all time, and I love his transition More than from, Robotnik. Yes. Wesker is the greatest video game villain of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree, actually. Yeah. Because I love how it's the story of a villain who turns into a supervillain. Because in the first game, he's got his own agenda and he's just trying to cover his track because he's got his own motives. And I love how he has his rebirth moment. And when he comes alive again, he becomes a supervillain with a god complex. Mm. I love that. I love how his, his motives always escalate. And I, we spoke about this the other day when we were emailing one another. I love how usually, usually the hero's journey, so you take Batman, any superhero, but Batman, Robocop, a gladiator movie, a hero always has a moment of rebirth where... They have their life, they die, they come back to life, and they've changed, and then they've got their own different ideals and everything. And I love, it's, it's basically based on the story of Christ, but I love how in Resident Evil, they give it to the, the antagonist. So he has his own motives, and then he has his death and his moment of resurrection, but it's a twisted version of Jesus. And he suddenly he's got a God complex instead of helping people. And his motives are just completely like different to what heroes would be, but are like a, a dark reflection of it. Yeah, so that's a really nice summing up of what Wesker's motives are. Um, so how do you think his de depictions were in the films? What do you think about that? Terrible. 100%. I'll tell you why. Because... Unfortunately, movies like Resident Evil and Alien vs. Predator and Transformers and Turtles and anything that you can think of from your childhood, they know the studios that the title of those movies... If I made a movie called Alien vs. Predator... It will sell on the name alone. That's how it that will bring in 200 exactly. million to the box office on the title. Capcom didn't realise when they made Resident Evil 5 is it sold on the name of Resident Evil 4 yeah. alone. 
not the strength of Resident Evil 5. And with the Resident Evil movies, they brought in characters one by one because they knew that bringing in those characters would bring in the audience. So it took until about movie four or five or something to bring in Albert Wesker. They bought the rights to the character. So they knew that putting in Albert Wesker when the franchise was failing would bring people back in. But the, the scene with Wesker in it didn't look any anything oh, as good as the, as the camera what? technology they had in the game. That, do you know what? That sums Paul Anderson up to me. And, you know... Lazy. He's, I've heard he's a great guy yeah, from people I've spoke to in the industry and all that. And I, I'm sure he is because I'm sure he seems great. But if you can't direct a fucking action scene that he's mirrored pretty much shot for shot <laughs> from a computer game from Resident Evil Five, and it's better in the game than it is in the film, a lot better in the game. You've got a serious problem with your yeah. choreography, your directing, and your cinematographer. Yeah, I completely understand. I've always been very frustrated with him. I always thought he should just emulate the original Resident Evil. Why didn't they do that? It's a perfect premise for a film, so why not? I read the original. George Romero, who's famous for uh, Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of like the godfather of zombies. Um, He wrote a script for the original Resident Evil movie years before Paul Anderson made his. And it was pretty much based on the game. Had Jill and Chris and Wesker in it and all that. And I read it, and they go to the mansion. I mean, it's slightly different, but they go to the mansion, and uh, you know, they go there, and then all hell kicks loose, and it's pretty much the story of the game. But do you know what? There's one line in the stage direction which he just misses the point that we always talk about, where it describes the mansion as you go in, like the piano room and the dining room, and they've put your classic white cloths over the ornaments and stuff. It misses the point. Doesn't it? Yeah, big fail. Because that suggests that when that they had time to cover the ornaments when there was an outbreak. It's supposed to be the Mary Celeste sort of scene. You turn up on on an area and suddenly everyone's disappeared. It adds to the the mystery, doesn't it? It's the Mary Celeste, Goldilocks and the Free Bears, whatever. You come come across somewhere in the middle of the woods and it's exactly as it should be. If everything's got covers over, dust sheets yeah. over it, it suggests that people have had the time to do that before leaving. They've had time to fuck off, haven't they? Yes. Whereas That's not right. When you've got candles lit and lights still on, like that there, or dinner Some tables hot dinner laid, and, a, and a hot coffee still yeah. steaming or something or like that. Or a wheel going around, like on Outlast, there's a wheel yeah. going around on a wheelchair. It means something sinister's happened. Exactly, and they missed the point with all the Resident Evil movies with that. Really annoying. I think... Um, People get a bit soulless when it comes to using a franchise such as Resident Evil. I mean, look at Uwe Boll. That guy's ruined a lot of films. Look at House of the Dead. House of the Dead. I don't want to jump on the bandwagon here with hating him. Um, everyone knows what he's about. But his films are a perfect example of how that can go so badly wrong. <laughs> Alone in the dark, yeah. Yeah, Christian Slater was in there, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, poor Christian Slater. <laughs> that guy would take any job. But anyway, I mean, they should have played this game as research when they made the films. I love the way they've got the images. They're basically GIFs, aren't they? Yeah, pretty much. Massive 1080p GIFs or whatever they are. They're brilliant. Mm. Yeah, even like little like, shots like that. Just a slight movement of the grass. The lighting on this game is incredible. Yeah, they really blended the CGI characters with the, sta- with the static images perfectly. It's brilliant. That was this. That was the big thing about this game, comparing it to the original games up to Code Veronica, is that this was the first Resident Evil mm. where you really felt like you were interacting with your scenery. Yeah, there's weight to the footsteps. Do you remember the original? You just had that little dot underneath you for a shadow. Yeah, slowly drew around. And the, the original Resident Evil was the game that spawned all those comedy sketches of computer games that run into walls, even though you sort of turn around yeah. on the spot and that's running with your hand, with your gun yeah. up by your chest, and just running <laughs> against the wall for ages. Safe room coming up, but I don't think we need to save yet. Well, this really annoys me. You can't attack zombies on the stairs. Oh, yeah. there, there, there you, you go. go. There you go. He can attack me, but I can't attack him. Yeah, cheeky fucker. Better than the old animation. In fact, that stairs never had an animation on the way down, did it? No, it was a loading screen. Yeah. Was it a loading screen? Was, or was that one screen. of the few stairs that didn't have a loading screen? No, it was, that was definitely it was, a loading screen. Okay. Never really utilised the map when I played it through the original <laughs> the first time through on the Sega Saturn. No, I didn't either, but I just found this map to be brilliant. It was really easy to navigate, and mm. and it, I like the idea of it just being green for saying that you've completely explored the room and it's got no other purpose. Yeah. Red to say that it's still got something to do with it. So I really, I really like that because it just really helps your progression. <laughs> really plays to that compulsive disorder in me. Yeah. Make everything green before I move on. Which sometimes doesn't pay off in games. 
like Mass Effect 2, for instance, if you fuck about spending all your time mining planets, you will get stung. Yeah, Mass Effect really found you out, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Kelly. I take a look at this. My obsessive compulsion, I'm taking the broken shotgun, even though I don't need to touch it. It's just for the sake of having a green map in the room. Just put it back, dude. It's a waste of inventory. You, know, take, you need a Chris, don't you, to replace the shotgun? No, no, don't worry about him. I'm going to be using him. this. It's just simply because I can have a room that's completely explored. Yeah, you're a whore. You're a completion whore. And that should be the armor key, is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's a great thing about the fixed camera angles. You always know when the enemies are there because you can hear them skulking about in the background. Look at the light flickering on the wall there. I miss from fixed camera angle games. Yeah, for me, they gave it a bit of a kind of a B-movie theme. It's a bit like you, you found a bit of found CCTV footage and you're watching it. Yeah, it, it gives that impression yeah. of something watching, doesn't it? Yeah, it was it was interesting. It's not even third person, is it? It's like a, it's another type of genre. Whereas it looks like survival horror is now going down the first person route. Wrong side. Um, that's the way it's heading. Particularly with things like uh, Amnesia was, was one of the ones that started it off. And then we've got Outlast and you've got Alien Isolation and everything. It's all kind of... <sighs> It's first person, even even Silent Hill was going first person, which I find bizarre. Yeah, they're all sort of following a little bit of a trend, aren't they? So we've got The Evil Within coming out by Sinji himself, the big man. And that's going to be third yeah. person. So do you think that's going to be the last chance to see whether it works? I'm interested in Alien Isolation and even Evil Within because I think Outlast was incredible at bringing survival horror back. Yeah. So Alien Isolation will prove whether you can string it out for a full game mm. as opposed to a DLC game. That's right. And Or a downloadable game, I should say. So that'll prove that. And Evil Within will prove whether third-person over-the-shoulder survival horror still works. So one of those games, or both of those games, or neither of those games, is going to be successful. And that'll really tell you, won't it, which direction it needs to go in. Uh, my money's on first-person. I'm just worried about Alien Isolation. There's something about it that's still not clicking with me. I think I love the Alien world, and you know I could sit here and say how much I love Alien and stuff, but like, what? There's just something about the footage that I've seen so far that just hasn't completely sold. I know what you mean. I don't know how long they can string out that sort of same mechanic that Alnas had with no weapon. I know you get a flamethrower in it and everything, but. Is it going to get a bit tiresome? There's only so many times in Outlast that I can be made to jump by the same sort of mechanism. Something bursts through a door, I'm hidden in a, in a, in a cupboard once again, and something's walking around outside, and it eventually wears thin. Or is it going to go for a full big title, big budget title, that's going to be full price? Is that going to last eight hours? I know. At least eight hours. I have to have one hell of a good story. It will do. I don't know, I just think that... Outlast was great because it was an experiment of the genre. Yeah. And it worked for a few hours. And it was brilliant. It was one of the best games I've played in a long time. But... Outlast is fantastic. Oh, it's incredible. Mm. But there's amazing music, amazing scenes, amazing set pieces, amazing tension, amazing mechanics. It brings survival horror back. But... Alien Isolation. I just got this horrible feeling that it's either just going to turn into a little bit of a weapons mash that we've not seen yet. You know, because like we've we've seen the flamethrower with the alien, yeah. And I know you've probably got limited fuel and all that, but if you're clever and you just save up your fuel, is it just going to be every time the alien pops up, oh, I'll just flamethrow him? Oh, there he's run off now. Yeah, I'll just hide here, reload, and then yeah, yeah, and blast then, him again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll see if they can pull it off. I know you have droids and other enemy types that are going to be around, and you're fighting with the environment as well. Um, but I don't think it's going to be like like Dead Space. I think the whole point of survival horror for me is <clears throat> putting a vulnerable character into a hostile environment, which is why this is so good. It's why things like Dead Space are so good. And in fact, Dead Space is a little bit different because he's not just vulnerable, he's you know psychologically unstable as well, so he's got that vulnerability as well. Add that to the intimidating environment and uh, the crazy enemies. And in fact, in the beginning like um, entrance to Dead Space 2, you're, you're in a straight jacket and you don't have any weapons. So you're just running about and you can't attack anybody, yet you're getting attacked, which is kind of what Alien Isolation is doing. But that's only for a small segment in Dead Space. So will it last the whole game? We'll, we'll have to wait and see. The strongest thing that Alien Isolation has got going for it is its license. Yeah. By far. Definitely. And they've made good use of that as well. Yeah, it looks like it. They've made really good use of it. It looks mm -hmm. like Ridley Scott's original movie, but it's whether... Uh, there's our first Crimson Head getting up. But, um... 
so you I mean sometimes it's a bit sort of so what you know it, it might be pretty and it might have the music that's like alien and and you might be like oh this is exactly like walking around the nostromo yeah but after a while if it doesn't work it doesn't work does it yeah, you might get a bit bored of it particularly if you if you're let's say you're a new a new fan you haven't seen the original films but Thank, hopefully you haven't played Colonial Marines I've and got, you get into it and you're just walking around would you get bored exactly and, and also where's the replay value yeah once you've done it you've done it haven't you that's right which again I would say about Outlast I don't really have a desire to go through it again but I will say that it's one of the best games I've played in a long time but it's not the type of game that I'll go, oh, I really want to do that again now. Well, that's what Cliff Brzezinski said from uh, Unreal, didn't he? He always said that Survival Horror is... is he can't see why you're going to get full releases anymore. They have to be indie releases because you there's no, there's no replay value. I can see his point. But maybe there's no replay value in any other type of game type as well. Are you going to go back and play Last of Us again? I mean, you're going to go back and play... I don't know. I don't think I'll play through Halo's campaign again. I won't play through Call of Duty's campaign again. Unless it has a multiplayer. That's the only thing, isn't it? Well, unless it's something like Assassin's Creed, where even after you've completed the main story, you can just go back into the world and you've got collectibles and side missions and extra bits and bobs to sort out. Like Red Dead. Yeah, like Red Dead or GTA, yeah. that sort of game. As long as you don't have to play as his son, which is oh, fucking yeah. annoying. That was an asshole. Oh, John Marston's son, yeah. Yeah, pathetic little worm, really, wasn't he, compared to John Marston? But anyway, it's a different, it's a different podcast for a different time. But I mean, but the game that we're playing right now... But I think this has got great replay value, even though it's a one playthrough sort of game. Well, you get two storylines, don't you, basically? Because you play as Jill through through one type, and you, and you get you get Barry as your backup, and then you can play through as Chris, and you get to see Rebecca. Yeah, and there's multiple around. different endings you can get, yeah. and there's different level of difficulties. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen all of the all of the endings, in fact, in this game. Yeah, I think, well, I'll tell you what, on the remaster, there's an achievement for every type of ending. Wow. So Any idea how many it. there are? I'd imagine about six or something. Uh, but... I think there's about six, yeah, yeah, actually. You're right. Wesker being thwarted at the end of all of them, I would imagine. Does he get slaughtered by the tyrant by, in all of them? What's really weird is that in Resident Evil, uh, the original, whether you play as Chris or Jill... The gas room. He, is this the gas room? It is. This is with the knight puzzle. Yeah. Let's see if we can remember what combination it is. Yeah, so I'll see if I can remember it. I haven't played it for a while, so you have to bear with me. It's classic game and mechanic, you know. Top left first, isn't it? Anyway. It's the top... I think it's the top right I go for first, usually. Yeah. No, it probably changes. I can't remember. It's randomised. It might be this one. All right. Um, well, if you get this wrong, it's going to be embarrassing for you. For you! <laughs> but if I get it right... It'll be glory for you. And then I think... Yes, it's this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That... There you go. Ah! Look nice at that. One, man. That's a good memory. Twelve years ago, and I still remember it. Yeah, you say that, but we've played through every single one recently in a saga. That was four oh, years right, ago. Right, right. That was recently. four years ago. <laughs> it was a while ago. Would you do another Resident Evil saga? Maybe we'll do it all on Let's Play. They're From great zero to, play to six. They're great to play through as a saga. Yeah. And that includes Code Veronica. It leaves out Outbreak and the other shooting games that are on the Wii. But yeah, we don't leave. We don't play the the Survivor or the Gaiden or the Outbreak or the no. Umbrella Files or the Dark Side Chronicles. We don't uh, play those games because they're, they're not be really right. canon. I'm not saying they're not going to no, be any I'm good. They're bad. Mm. Just um, I just don't really consider them canon. No, that's it. They're not part of the story, are they? So I think we're we're, we're wrapping up this Let's Play here. So we won't do it for about 40 minutes. We get to the first save point, shall we? Yeah, I'm going to go back now and just sort my inventory out and just save, I think. Because we've got the first death mask, which mm. we need another three, but they come in quick succession, including seeing the giant snake. Yeah. And then once you've got those three... You're not going to burn that guy? No, I'm going to leave no. him for now. Right. And then uh, and then a Barry's left us some supplies. And then um, I'm going to, in the next playthrough, get all three death masks and take us all the way up to the guardhouse. Fair enough. So we'll get that sorted. Sounds good, man. But we've pretty much motored through this so far. Yeah, that was some of the best Resident Eviling I've ever seen. Leave it to you to do that. And now we can enjoy the pleasant tones of the safe room. <laughs> but that's pretty much drawing this Let's Play to a close. I say Let's Play, it's pretty much been just a, a commentary fest. But if you enjoyed it, please do hit the like button, um, subscribe. We really appreciate it, and we'll work on our next one for you. As soon as we um, get a single request, we'll work on it. Um, we've got a lot more to say. We haven't discussed Resident Evil 4, uh, Nemesis, a lot of the older ones. We're massive fans of Resident Evil here, so it's really enjoyable. And uh, you're going to pick all that stuff up, dude. 
Just Barry, leaving me too much stuff. Good old reliable Barry. Do you reckon he's going to be in Resident Evil 7? Well, his daughter's in Resident Evil Revelations 2 with Claire, yeah, Moira. I've heard they're going to be releasing that episodically. Although we, yeah, that's odd that. Yeah, we can discuss that more on the next one. Yeah, we'll talk sure about how I feel about Revelations that. 2 on the next one. Mm. Although Resident Evil 7, I'm a bit more concerned about that. I've heard nothing about that just yet. Yeah, well, the only thing I've heard is they're tying it into the films, which can't be good. There you go, you can wrap All right. up now. Admin complete. All right, thanks very much for listening. Um, we'll catch you next time. This has been Cerebral War, Resident Evil, Let's Play slash commentary. Peace out. actually going to be comfortable in that position yes why have you got those tiny rolled up shorts on <laughs> they're not rolled up they've just got a lap over them got a lip on them yeah they're chino they're chino got the rolled up shorts that I hate yeah it's true actually why have you and they're burgundy I know you're worse than bloody David Coulthard right now <laughs> <laughs> don't you fucking say that <laughs> him in his package <laughs> he's got some seriously spray on trousers that man they were, weren't they? Yeah. I swear that they always design those trousers to make your cup just stick out for no reason. Because I've never yeah. bought a pair of trousers that look so cup revealing in that sense. Maybe I'm just too So small. you've only got at me for fighting, and now you're just like popping them out like a machine gun. They smell like pizza. It's, it's a defense mechanism against your fucking intolerant <laughs> smells. What, it, stop texting women. <laughs> got a job to do here. Right. Should we just go through... um? Pikmin instead.